Hi everyone, so let's now look at our last component part of aggregate to mod and that is of course net exports also known as the trade balance and of course this is represented by exports minus imports. Exports of course are an ejection into the circular flow of income, uh, imports of course are a withdrawal from that circular flow. Okay so net exports or the net trade balance is the total value of exported goods and services minus the imported value of imported products and services. Okay, so if a country runs a trade surplus, like for instance Germany, uh, China as uh, the most prominent examples in international economics, uh, then you can see the actual value of exports uh, will be greater than the value of imported products. And therefore, aggregate demand will increase. Income within that circular flow will increase. A trade deficit, however, as of course the UK economy runs, is where the value of your exports is less than the value of your imports. And of course, aggregate demand will therefore contract, it will decrease or shift to the left. Okay, uh, so improving the trade balance, what can be done? Well, firstly, you can increase exports, of course. Uh, so how can you go about doing this? Well, you'll look at this in great detail within under the banner of uh, the current account uh, issue uh, in international economics in year 13. So if you've looked at that for your year 13 studies, great. This would be a, a helpful piece of revision here. Uh, otherwise, don't worry too much about the nature of these points. Just take the general gist of uh, where we're going. Okay, uh, you'll develop your understanding as we move through this course here. Uh, so firstly, improve competitiveness. Uh, yes, you can try to raise productivity, uh, so investment in capital goods uh, to improve the supply side of your economy and to reduce the actual cost of producing those exports or alternatively focus on developing labour productivity so that your labour force is more productive uh, and can generate and design and develop more uh, competitive, more higher value added goods uh, and that will really help to boost your international competitiveness. Alternatively, a depreciation could be considered. A depreciation, well, it's, it's debatable how uh, successful this is likely to be. Uh, here we can see that uh, the consequence of that will be that you will have a weak pound, imports will become dear, and exports will become cheap. Okay, so firstly, we see uh, that exports become cheaper, more competitive, more price competitive, that is. Um, but however, when it comes to the imported goods, uh, you can see that they become dearer. The problem potentially here is, if you do that, you may face higher input costs if you need imports uh, from abroad, which constitute your input of the final product that you make. Okay, so for instance, if you take uh, manufacturing a car, it may be that you import goods from uh, uh, particular inputs from Spain or France and, and so on. So therefore by importing those goods you are actually facing higher costs. So that may actually eradicate the benefits of having the weaker currency in terms of the price competitiveness. Another related point is of course uh, the elasticity of demand and how that may actually influence both imports and exports there. Okay, uh, Right there's also the risk that you might actually uh, really anger a few other trading nations and they may actually pursue competitive devaluations or competitive depreciations of their currency to make sure that they maintain their competitiveness in line with uh, your economy having adopted that approach so this this can really attract beg of thy neighbor policies uh, which uh, in the earlier part of uh, the 20th century were really quite disruptive uh, and destructive uh, for international trade. Okay, uh, then we've got the uh, notion of reducing imports. So how can you go about doing this? Well, you want to try and reduce demand for imports 
Uh, so one potential way, therefore, is to offer better goods, more competitive goods to your home market in the first instance. Uh, but in addition to that, a depreciation, well, possibly could be helpful as well, uh, because, of course, imports become dearer. So therefore, there may be less demand for those imported products as a consequence of that. It may also be the case that, uh, as you may have heard in the news uh, regarding China and the US, that protectionism is actually undertaken. So take uh, the most common example of that, which is tariffs. Uh, that's where a tax is imposed upon uh, imported goods and of course it raises the price of those imported goods which artificially makes your domestic firms more competitive in their home market. But again, there's the threat of retaliation. There's also the fact that uh, the vast majority of countries signed up to the WTO, the World Trade Organization and its membership and have therefore subscribed to WO. WTO rules uh, and this it really runs contrary to what the WTO says about trade. Okay uh, and then we've got uh, the possibility that some countries may wish to undertake a uh, contractionary monetary or fiscal policy that is really make the uh, circular flow of income or the uh, economy smaller uh, and reduce people's incomes within that area. So increasing interest rates, for instance, would increase the cost of borrowing. That would reduce people's disposable incomes across the country. Further to that, increasing taxation or cutting government spending, again, would have that same impact. It would reduce disposable income and that may reduce demand for imported goods. The big problem, of, of course, is how that will conflict with uh, the macroeconomic objective of economic growth. And that does pose an excellent evaluation point as we can see here, okay? So yeah, there's a real risk in trying to actually improve your trade balance. You make things worse and uh, fail to actually uh, achieve your other macro objectives. Okay, next up, does uh, the trade balance uh, really matter uh, we live in such a globalised uh, world that uh, the flows of money come into and out of countries very, very quickly, and it's, it's all perfectly normal. Further to that, of course, it depends on how this trade deficit is actually financed and where this money is coming from. Okay, uh, in addition to that, uh, another great point, as you can see I've written on the board here, is, is this trade balance being used to fund in consumption? In which case you could probably say over the longer term that's a bad thing or is it about investment in which case it may actually boost the actual productive capacity of the longer term economy because of that investment in capital goods that is taking place uh, okay now we've also got to bear in mind time lags and uh, the cost of supply side reforms so supply side reforms in trying to improve competitiveness, improve education so that uh, better, higher value added goods can be manufactured in a given country. This is all going to take a long, long time and be quite costly in developing such industries. Okay, so there's lots and lots of pertinent ar uh, arguments that you can make in relation to this. Uh, if you're revising for your year 13 content here, you'll want to go ahead and check out the uh, current account um, videos on this as well. That will be very useful for you. Okay guys, we'll leave that there. Thanks a lot.